What's up guys and welcome back to another W2A4 video. We all know how frustrating it is when you have your ESL module fail and you're stuck. You're stuck in a car park, you're stuck at your friend's house, wherever it may be. You're stuck because your ESL motor has failed inside your ESL module. This is a common fault with the W204s. Now there is a very cool little bypass that you can do and I'm going to show you guys right now but let me stress that you should only do this a limited amount of times. Do not keep doing this for like a month or so until you get it fixed. Only do this if you are in an emergency situation and you need to get back home. Another thing is you should only also attempt this if your ESL has failed in the unlock position because if your ESL has failed in the lock position, the steering wheel is still going to be locked. The most effective way to get your ESL to unlock is to tap on the steering wheel or tap underneath your steering column in a position that is solid what you can do is you get something like a rubber mullet and you smack your steering column until it unlocks the point of this is to help spin the motor in the ESL module that one last rotation and what happens there is it gives it enough shock to unlock it now remember only attempt this if your ESL has failed in the unlock position if it's locked, it's a little bit different, but there are a few things you can try, like jump starting it this way, letting it run for a period of time, and then trying to start it with the key immediately. I'll walk you guys through it right now, but this is very helpful for when you are stranded and you just want to get back home. But remember, only do this in an emergency situation because I have heard that it can mess with your sand unit so please take it into consideration and only attempt this if it's an emergency situation so let me show you how it's done so here we are in the car I'm going to insert my key and I'm going to turn it to the second position one two if my ESL has failed Obviously, it won't start the car right now. From here, we're going to go to the front of the car to the fuse box. Now, in Australia, your fuse box is on the driver's side, which is the front right-hand side. And in America, your fuse box would be on this side here, which is the front left-hand side while you're sitting in the car. All right, first, let's just open up the fuse box so I can show you what you're going to need. All right. I keep this in the car just in case it ever happens to me randomly, then I have a way to start the car. This is a simple jumping cable. I simply crimped on two spade bits to a cable, and this is going to allow me to jump the starter. It's going to look different on your car if you are in America, because the fuse box is flipped the other way around, and it's on the other side over there. The two things we need to pay attention to in the fuse box is this green relay right here and also this number 27 fuse, 7.5 amps. The number 27 fuse is the one relating to your steering lock and this relay is for your starter. These are the two you need to pay attention to. Now that we have what we need, I'm going to show you step by step how you do this now. So step one, insert your key into the ignition and go to the second position. Now, if your ESL has failed, your car isn't even going to switch on. It's going to say insert key or key not recognized, something along those lines. Insert your key and turn it to the second position. Then you pull out the number 27 fuse just for a couple seconds, maybe five seconds or so. You reinsert it, right? And then you pull out your starter relay and the two pins you need to focus on are the one that is vertical and directly opposite it, the one that's horizontal. On the actual Mercedes relay, it's going to be number five and number three. This is where you jump it. 
you insert one side of your jumper cable in and the other. Watch what happens as soon as I insert it. Look at that. It started straight away. And that's it guys. Now you can put back in your relay and drive your car wherever you need to go. And that's one way you can bypass once the ESL fails. But remember, you do need something to jump it. You could also just use something like a safety pin. As long as you make a connection between the two prongs, then it's going to work. It will jump the starter for you. So remember, once again, you insert your key and you go to the second position. You then come to your fuse box, pull out number 27 fuse, 7.5 amp for about five seconds. You reinsert it. You pull out your starter relay and then you jump the two prongs, number five and number three. And that's it. The car will start and then you put everything back in, put your relay back in, fuse box cover back on and then you drive where you need to go and start to fix your ESL module. Now let me show you the other way you can try to bypass it if your steering wheel is locked. You will do the exact same thing and jump start your car. So that's why I always leave this just inside my fuse box in case I ever need to jump it for any reason, I have it inside my fuse box. This is a very handy feature to know. You would not believe how handy it can be. Now remember that this only works when your ESL has failed in the unlock position because your steering wheel needs to be unlocked in order for this to work. Because you can start your car, but if your ESL is locked, you're not gonna be able to go anywhere. However, that's where this option two comes into play. You jump the car the exact same way we have just done right now. Then once you get in the car, your steering wheel is going to be locked. But what you can try is to shut off the car after about say five to 10 minutes. Once you shut it off, give it a crank again straight away. And hopefully it has jolted the ESL enough to unlock the steering wheel. It may not work, but there is also a chance that it can work as well. Because if you didn't know, when the ESL fails in the unlock position, most of the time it's the motor that fries, not the ESL itself. All you're really trying to do is get the motor in the ESL module to turn one last rotation so that it unlocks your steering wheel. And once it does that, you quickly start the car so you can drive straight home and not be stranded anywhere else. If that fails as well, and you're looking for another alternative to unlock the steering wheel, what you can do, give it a tap. Tap on the steering wheel a few times, not too hard, just tap on it enough. And also underneath here, under the ESL module, your ESL module is up the top, you tap under the steering column just enough with your hands so that it can try and shock the ESL module to spin that one last rotation. Get your key ready, leave it there, tap the steering wheel, insert the key and hopefully you get that winding sound where it unlocks the ESL. Another thing you can try, tap underneath here a few times, like that. Get your key ready, Insert it and hopefully you get that wine sound again and it unlocks your ESL module. These are two other methods you can definitely try and they could work. When my ESL was locked in the unlock position, these were the things that I did and trust me, it does work. And I was able to unlock my ESL that one last rotation so that I could drive my car back home and fix the ESL module. Now, if you want to see how you fix the ESL module yourself via a DIY, I have done a video on it. So be sure to check out that video and I go through a step-by-step -step guide how you fix the ESL module for the W204 and save yourself almost $1,500. Now guys, in the next video, I'm going to be finally finishing off the retrofit for the blind spot detectors. So be sure to stay tuned for that video. So much more is coming. I really hope you found this video helpful guys. And if you did, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs. Signing off.